Hey, thanks for joining me for another video. Um, today we're going to talk about striker fired firearms. Uh, previously, I talked about double action firearms and gave some examples. Um, before I get too far into this, uh, a buddy of mine had pointed out that the, these videos are intended for newer gun owners and that maybe I should bring safety into the equation. And, and to be honest with you, typically I don't because I clear all the weapons before I film and make sure double and triple check that they're not loaded. But one of the rules of firearm safety is to treat all weapons as if they are loaded. So what we're gonna do here really quick for the sake of new viewers, is we're going to, you can get that on camera, you can see down into the chamber and you can see there's not a magazine in here. This is a CAR P9, CAR P9 is empty. Um, and in pieces in front of you is a Glock 48. Anyhow, Doing what I just did is always a good habit. It's something you should always do. Even if you're at a gun store and the person behind the counter showing you the gun, it's their job to check it first. Before they hand it to you, you should check it as well, just like I did, um, to ensure that the gun is not loaded. Because again, until we've checked, all guns are loaded, right? Whether we know or not. Um, and, and just to kind of not too far down the rabbit hole, I recently saw a video of a police officer, a guy in uniform, standing at a gun counter, looking at a gun, the gun store employee hands it to him, and I'm really not clear on the circumstances, but long story short, as the officer's messing with the gun, for whatever reason, he takes his offhand, puts it in front of the muzzle, presses the trigger, and somehow, some way, that damn gun went bang and blew a hole in his hand. He's a cop. He's around guns all the time. So, And he was with a professional that sells guns. So, again, make sure they're empty before you start, start messing with them. All right, so let's get into the striker fired guns. This is going to be a lot shorter video. Um, than the double action video. Striker fired guns are probably the most common handgun sold on the market and we have Glock to thank for that. It's going back about 35 years with the Glock 17. Um, started getting introduced to police departments and the police departments just started swooping them up. And then it took quite a few years for people to make successful competitive guns and striker fired polymer framed guns. But now that's all the market is flooded with and we have Glock to thank for that. So one of the pros of owning a striker fired gun is unlike the double action, single action pistols, the trigger pull on a striker fired gun is consistent. If you haven't seen my video on double action guns, let me just explain again really quick. Your first trigger pull is extremely heavy and then after that they are light and short and crisp. The long heavy trigger pull on a double action gun is considered a safety feature. So, on striker fired guns, you don't necessarily have that issue. Now, some triggers are heavier than others. In fact, these car pistols are known for having a little bit of a heavy trigger for a striker fired gun and the reset, the trigger reset where it comes back out. Notice it has to come, hear that click? Notice it has to come all the way back out before it resets. The trigger pull on the car is far more similar to a double action revolver than to most striker fired guns. So let's talk about some of the safety features of striker fired guns because there's a lot of misunderstanding about this. So this is the frame of a Glock 48 and while there's a couple of aftermarket modifications, they still work the same. I'm going to bring this out. So a lot of striker fired guns have that little dingus right there. Smith & Wesson has something that's a hinged trigger, but the long story short, this is a safety feature, right? You can't just touch the trigger and make the gun go off. You have to hit both levers. So that's one safety feature that's built into many striker fired guns. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see a couple of different things. This is important. And this, sorry, I'm doing it upside down on camera. This area right here is important on striker fired guns. And you will see See how they both move when I press the trigger, see if I can get that. See how it moved in the back and that move? Let me show you what they're doing. So I'm going to show you something that's not exclusive to striker fired guns. They've been around a long time, but this is something that's a, it's a mandatory feature that I would say on striker fired guns, and that is this right here. And I, you can't tell, but I'm, if you can hear, I'm depressing it up and down. Long story short, there's a cylinder here. And once it's depressed, it opens up a channel that allows this, which is your striker, to travel forward. Right now, the striker can't travel forward because this is blocking it. Once it's depressed, it clears a channel. This can pass through the channel and it can fire. So that's where this comes into play. This nub right here 
is what pushes this little safety plunger up. And then this little area right here, there's actually some numbers on it too, that's what basically activates the back of this striker and sends it home and gun fires. So some things about this also that are inherently safe is if you drop the gun, it's not going to go off because this is blocking the striker or quote unquote the firing pin from going forward when it's dropped. And that is a problem on some, some firearms, um, particularly older guns, but there's modern guns that have that issue as well. And in fact, recently, uh, a gun relatively new to the market, comparatively the SIG 320, uh, I guess the first run had some, some drop issues, but that was related to the weight of the trigger and inertia and so on and so forth. So again, these don't typically have a manual safety where you have to swipe it like I showed you on a, on a double action gun. Uh, some striker fired guns do come equipped with safeties, but for the most part, the safeties are built in internally to the function. I would call them passive safeties. And now I am going to bring a loaded gun into the picture, but it's going to stay in the holster. And I'm going to show you the kind of exception to the rule here. And let's see if I can get this on camera on my crappy cell phone. Right there. See that right here? The, the gun in my hand in the holster is a Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. And I would say out of all the striker firearms that come with safeties, the Smith & Wessons are probably going to be the ones that you encounter most often with some type of a safety. And you can see where there's already a, a notch. It's not completely cut out of the gun. It's almost just a, a machine mark. So that way, if this particular frame was going to be cut for a safety, that's where it would go. And you would see that you would swipe it down and you'd be ready to fire. So that's about it. There's really not much to it. There's all different types of striker firearms. Uh, Glock being the most famous, Smith & Wesson being a, a popular one as well. Again, pictured in front of you as a car. Um, and for the most part, there's not really a bad one. Some are better than others, but through modern production methods, uh, they're all usually pretty good. And they, they all might operate a little bit different, but just for the, the sake of brevity and for the sake of just kind of sweeping a broad stroke, again, they all kind of activate the striker the same way when they fire. Um, and again, the, the, the benefit to these is you're going to have a more consistent trigger pull every time. And it's not necessarily the best trigger pull, but when you're shooting consistency and, and knowing what to expect on that trigger will help you improve your shot. Um, if you like the video, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching and uh, give it a thumbs up. Thank you.